So it's been about two weeks since the gameplay trailer for Spider-Man 2 came out, and since then Insomniac has pretty much been radio silent on terms of game news. Other than the release date, which is October 20th, we really haven't seen much from the game. But even though we've seen so little, I'm still so excited for this game, and I'm certain it'll be one of the best, if not the best game of 2023. Like, video aside for a second, this game is the reason I'm getting a PS5, so I can record this game for you guys. I'm honestly so excited for its release, I have no doubt it'll go down as one of my top 5 favorite games of all time. But back to the task at hand, around a week ago I made a video talking about some theories about how this game could end, and I got a lot of people saying they agree, and a lot saying they disagree, and also a lot saying their own ideas and theories, so thank you so much for that guys. I always love to see your theories. But anyway, I wanted to talk about some more evidence I had for some of the statements I made in the video. For example, I said that the Venom symbiote has already been attached to Peter for at least a week by the time the point of the game we see comes along, and at this point I believe I have undeniable evidence pointing directly to that being the case. In the previous video, I already mentioned Peter's behavior being different is evident enough, and I still stand by that, but if you pay close attention, there are still some very important details that start to stand out. For instance, around six and a half minutes into the gameplay trailer, Miles finds Dr. Connors' molted skin deep within the Harlem fish market. Now, in the game, it's used to mildly scare Miles and the audience, but if you're a nerd like me, you know that lizards actually shed their skin at least twice a month when they're eating and in turn growing. And judging by the half-eaten fish carcasses scattered all around, I'd say he's eating a fair amount. So for him to have shed his skin already, Dr. Connors has had to have been the lizard for at least a week. Now, I know that doesn't have much to do with Peter having the symbiote, but since Insomniac likes to make these sorts of events line up with each other, I'd say it's safe to assume that Dr. Connors becomes the lizard around the same time Peter gets the symbiote. It just makes the most sense. They wouldn't have these events play out months apart from each other. And even more damning is this line spoken by Peter at the very end of the teaser. You sure? He's got big teeth. So do I. If Peter is already aware of the fact that he also has big teeth, he must have transformed into Venom at least once before, meaning he's had to have had the symbiote for at least a few days for him to have achieved symbiosis. So with all this in mind, I'd say it's pretty safe to assume it's been about a week since all this started. This also seems to be around a week after Harry gets taken over by Venom and we have a fight between him, Miles, and Peter, as evident by the very first teaser we ever saw from this game. And I have a sneaking suspicion that's around the time that the symbiote secretly gets onto Peter. After the two Spider-Man fight Venom and actually deter him for the time being, leaving Harry weak, and forcing Peter and Miles to care for Harry, possibly by taking him to a feast shelter or somewhere else. But while it's not exactly clear what will happen with Harry after their initial fight, we do know for a fact that by this point in the gameplay trailer, Harry is weakened and needing help from Dr. Connors to survive. We know that because of what Peter says here. Can't lose Connors. Harry's dying. And he's the only one who can help. So that must mean the Spider Bros have already had an altercation with the symbiote, and they must have at least temporarily defeated it, causing Venom to switch hosts. Otherwise, there's just no explanation for why the symbiote is suddenly on Peter when last we saw it, it was on Harry. They must have already met prior to the gameplay trailer. Alright, now that we've covered all that, let's move on to something I talked about a little bit last time. If you haven't seen that video, of course, make sure to give it a watch, link in the annotation. But anyway, in that video I talked about a possible showdown between Peter Parker and Miles Morales. And my reasoning behind that being that Peter seems very aggravated with Miles by the end of the trailer even though the only thing Miles was doing was helping him. I mean, it's thanks to Miles that Peter didn't get captured by Kraven's hunters when he got too careless and attacked when he shouldn't have. It's thanks to Miles that they were even able to take down the gunship in the first place. If not for his alley-oop idea and also his electricity, it would still have been flying by the end of the trailer. But to me, it seems like none of that really matters to Peter. He still just remains super rude and intolerant the entire time. Almost like he doesn't even want Miles there to begin with. If you somehow don't believe me, here's proof. Miles, the hunters tracked Connors to the Harlem fish market. Lizard. I'm on it. Sounds like Craven's checking off his. We don't have much time. Move. Uh, guess we'll chat later. Almost done here. Civilians are all safe. How you looking? Gunship won't quit. I'm right behind you. We'll take it down together. No time. What are you guys doing? Trying to take out that gunship. Can't get close enough. Pete, alley you on three. Fine. Let's go, man, before he gets too far. No, he's mine. You sure? He's got big teeth. 
So do I. Now, the voice actor for Peter Parker in this game, Yuri Lowenthal, said that he's been researching behaviors of addiction in order to prepare for his role as Symbiote Spider-Man. So it's likely that throughout the game, we'll be seeing Peter struggle with whether or not he should keep the black suit, much like in Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 3. My guess is he ultimately chooses to keep the suit, which causes the symbiote to take over more and more of his personality without him knowing, forcing Miles to step in and try to help his partner in crime fighting before he makes a mistake that he can't take back. While we're on the subject, let me throw another thought your way. What if Miles isn't able to stop Peter before it's too late? And because of that, Peter actually ends up taking a life. From what we've seen from the Venom character, he has no problem with biting heads off and eating people. He even requests it at times. I am happy to eat, Mrs. Chen. No, you cannot eat, Mrs. Chen. And if you know Spider-Man at all, you know he has a no-killing policy, much like Batman and other heroes. But with him being corrupted by the demented murderer that is the Venom symbiote, I don't think I would be surprised if Venom managed to tip the odds in his favor and somehow got Peter to do the one thing he swore he would never do. Let's just hope Miles steps in before we have to worry about that. Knowing how much Miles cares for his mentor, and knowing how determined he is as a character, I really don't think it's likely for him to give up his quest to help Peter, even if Peter is actively trying to kill him. I mean, that's basically what they're used to, trying to help people who are corrupted and trying to kill them. And Miles has already shown his ability to hold his own against some pretty powerful opponents, one of which being Rhino. If anyone is geared up to take on Symbiote Spider-Man, it's Miles. Something I haven't yet mentioned is that Insomniac has confirmed you're going to be able to switch between the two Spider-Men throughout the duration of the campaign. What if they take it a step further and have us play as both Peter and Miles as they fight it out? Miles risking his life trying desperately to save his best friend, and Peter not resting until he's finished what he started. That, at least in my book, would make for a very dramatic, emotional, and impactful final boss. But I, for one, can't wait to see what we end up with on October 20th. I want to take this moment to thank every single one of you for all the support you've given me across these last few videos. I've been trying for years to be accepted into the YouTube Partner Program so I can do nothing but just make content for a living. And thanks to you guys and only you guys, my lifelong dream is finally becoming a reality. I really can't thank you guys enough and I'll spend the rest of my life trying to repay you by giving you the best content I possibly can. You guys deserve nothing but the absolute best and I'm so grateful for everything you guys have given me so far. Our journey together is just beginning, so please, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you know as soon as new videos come out. And why not leave this video a like if you enjoyed what you saw, it really helps me out more than you think. Alright guys, that's gonna be it for me. I love every single one of you with all of my heart. Thank you so much for watching.